because the way you reclaim your power in your voice is by speaking it out the shame only manifests gets bigger and bigger when you don't speak and when you don't share it hi welcome to the inner verses welcome back to the channel the podcast whatever you're watching or listening this at this is your first time my name is patience I am the goddess in chief here at the inner verses. I am a spiritual teacher, internal student, because who is not, okay? This lifelong journey is exactly that. It's a lifelong journey of learning and relearning and unlearning. And that's exactly what I am and what we do here really at the inner verses is unlearning and relearning and more learning about who we are, who want to be, all in the hope and in the mission and all with the intention of nurturing ourselves, nurturing the longest relationship which you'll ever have, which is the one with ourselves, healing our inner child, spiritually developing, holistic wellness, taking care of ourselves, mind, body, and spirit, the whole birth, whole shebang, okay? That is exactly what we do here. Today, I wanted to share a bit about my story of what and why I came across only this path of wanting to really be like, no, the relationship with yourself is so, so important. Why that is important to me and also what brought me to it. And we're gonna touch into a little bit of like sacred rage because my whole story was really about turning my pain into purpose. And that is what I still do every single day or attempt to do and have the intention to do. And that is what I help and intentionally support people in holding their space so that they can turn any pain, any conflict into healing. So for me, where did it all begin? So for those that may not know, I was born in Zimbabwe where I spent the first 10 years of my life. I'm from a massive family. I'm the youngest of five, only girl. So I was definitely a daddy's little girl and also mommy's little girl. Listen, I just was <laughs> the one and only. Um, and so, yeah, from such a beautiful, loving, big family, like for in Azimabin culture, extended family is close family. It's only when I moved to the UK when I was 11, where I was like, oh, you have an immediate family, which is just the core of like mom, dad, kids. Whereas in that culture, it's more community based. So you've got the core base include like the cousins, extended cousins, married and all that. So it's always, always like a big family. That's just the way that it's been and that it is. So in that, it means there's a lot of trusting. And I will say even for me, I'm just trusting of people. You'll have loads of people around you. And that's kind of where for me, one of the biggest traumatic events happened, which was being unfortunately, fortunately for them, and unfortunately for that little kid in me, from the age of like three to about 10, I was being sexually abused by family members of the extended family, which were like cousins. And it was something that for a long time I thought was normal. And even when I came to speak to an adult about it, because of where I was mentally, I just remember hearing the words of, oh, there's some things that you keep to yourself. So it was really like, oh, don't tell your, your mom, don't tell your dad, because you know, they're gonna flip off, they're just gonna go crazy. And so that fear of the overreaction or that fear of like, oh God, are they gonna end up in jail? Because that's that's those are the words that were said to me. For me, made me then just completely shut down and, and in a way I felt like my voice that day was totally disconnected, totally removed. And it was, it normalized just being like, okay, yeah, you just go on, just have my body. Do what, do what you need to do is just gonna be what it is. And for a long time, that was just, it happened. It was like a deep dark secret that actually I thought me participating in, I was the one to blame. Like I held so, so much shame with that um until uh, honestly i'll probably say until maybe quite recently because that's something that a lot of people don't talk about it's when you go through any sexual assault sexual molestation abuse assault or even where there's a sense of like physicality what you get 
the exchange of the energy so the perpetrator the predators what they do is when they are physically harming you they're exchanging their guilt and shame into you energetically which then actually means you hold on to that so not only are you holding to your own you're holding on to that person and that person may have been also abused when they were younger because a lot of the time the pattern repeats right and it takes a lot of strength and a lot of clarity and a lot of commitment for you to stop the pattern which for me absolutely is the reason why I am even doing this and even sharing the story is to stop the pattern because the way you reclaim your power in your voice is by speaking it out the shame only manifests gets bigger and bigger when you don't speak and when you don't share it because the stories continue just building and building the intensity and you're protecting those people that are horrific that's also based on their own experiences but nonetheless what they did is not an excuse to justify them doing that to you and for me it took me a long time to understand that and to protect myself first and to remove the shame from myself the guilt from myself and rightfully place it back on them with love and thank you and good night so that's what I was dealing with for the first early years of my life and I got very very good at just putting everything in the Pandora box and just numbing I went to boarding school and when I was at seven years old by myself which I'm like I wouldn't have wanted to I didn't really get a say in it I just ended up in boarding school and then I moved to the UK when I was 10 then about 11 12 12 years old my dad passed away and so it was just layers on layers on layers of so many things that I just got really really good at at just stuffing away and just like packing in the Pandora box making it look pretty making it look presentable and going on about my business but also at that stage there was no way I even had the capacity to process what was happening to me because I was a baby you know it's now when I look at my nephews the same age I'm like oh my god you are a baby and that helps me have the compassion for myself and so yeah I moved over to the UK and about 14 because I was always really interested I've always spent time with myself I mean like I said I went to boarding school and I was like seven <laughs> so I've been very much and I learned from a very young age how to be with myself and by myself how to be with my thoughts and I feel like although that was traumatic in one way it created dependency and independence within me and also dependency of like oh wait Okay, so I'm in my thoughts. What is actually happening? And I remember I'd watch a lot of therapy shows like in Yan Love Fix My Life. I was obsessed with that. I absolutely loved it. I um, still do now. And I'd watch a lot of other people getting coached or therapized because I just find it fascinating. And then that's when stories would then come up of them going through abuse, whether it's mental, sexual, physical, all the different types. And I was like, wait, hold up now. Why does that sound familiar? You know, because I was so good at pushing it away and suppressing it that I would kind of forget that happened to me until I was here and I was like, wait, that sounds familiar. So that would like slowly trickle a little thing in me, which for a long time, I was just like, no, 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 back in your box, back in the box and just sit pretty and look pretty because we ain't got time. But got to the point where it was like, no, no, it's time. It really is time for you to look at this. It's time for you to unpack this. And that was scary. And that happened over a, a certain amount of years. I find myself a lot of the time just crying, crying for no reason. I find myself a lot of the times just overthinking. But that was one of the things, overthinking scenario planning of like, oh, if I do this, if I do that, what's that person gonna think? What's this or that? Holding on to shame and guilt. And that is something that's taken me a long time to let go of. And then even within work scenarios, I would, especially for like managers or anyone that was my elder, I would always be like oh okay they know what's best because not only are they older but I wouldn't voice really my opinions and if someone did me wrong I'd just kind of I'd rather like fight with them in the shower <laughs> than and have the conversation with myself like oh I got them so good rather than actually speaking with them and just be like nope leaving it alone so it took me a long time for me to gain my voice and some of the things that I did was absolutely going to therapy and doing the work and understanding what the ramifications or the amplifications of like children and people that have gone through sexual abuse and molestation and also speaking my truth I started sharing with my friends were the first people I shared it with then I shared it with like my parents and 
and then I was like oh my god if for me how I was acting and the things I my insecurities my overthinking my people pleasing my doubts and my self lack of self-worth all derived from those few years of me of that really being ripped away from me of suppressing my voice and that's when the inner child healing for me has been so instrumental and continues to be but for me when I looked at all those things I was like okay and this was with the help of like um, one of my therapy sessions was actually the reason why I get so frustrated and cut a lot of people off is when I feel like I'm not being heard. And that's because first of all, I don't feel like I have a voice in this situation. But secondly, when I do voice, it's dismissed. And right, okay. So before knowing this, I was just reacting off that. And I get so frustrated. And I was one of those people that I had to make my point. So you'd hear me four or five times until I felt satisfied that you knew what I was talking about and you heard my point. You heard how I felt and you accepted how I felt. And I remember getting feedback from this and like past friendships and relationships. And I'd be like, well, you were not listening. So I'm gonna keep saying it again and again. <laughs> and until you get to the point where you're like, oh Lord, like you know what when you understand like oh no it's people not hearing me is what triggers me to go into this self-defense mode where i am just going at a thousand miles an hour and asking them to keep hearing me but actually i'm wasting energy because the person that really needs me to hear me is me i needed to hear me i needed to hear me and hear my voice and allow my voice to come back out and heal my throat chakra I heal my voice, I heal all the different chakras, especially my sacral chakra, which is a whole other video of the different chakras that get out of alignment when you go through such things, where there's grief, abuse, any traumatic event, small, big, they can misalign parts of you and parts of your energetic field. But one of the things, and that's something I really wanted to touch on for today, one of the things that I suppress for a long time until recent, and the effed up thing is recently up to about a year ago I was sexually assaulted by a family member and you're just like are you ki again are you kidding me someone I trusted someone I thought was like a brother to me and you're gonna be a predator and move that way nah and I knew at that point I was like no this has to be different it's gotta be absolutely different told like his partner told the family and their reaction first of all was giving side eye back onto myself I knew I had to do it differently and the one of the biggest things that I continue to do now till this day is I allow myself to be freaking angry allow the rage inside me to come out I honor that when I feel when I feel the unfairness the violation not only to my trust to my body like how dare you honestly how dare you who gave you the authority I did not give you authority consent none of that so how dare you think you could just do that and by allowing myself to feel feel the anger it allows it not to be stored in my body and I felt it it allows me not to hold on to what I held on for so many years and I remember I promised myself about five years ago I promised myself I was like no I will not torture myself and hold on for, to things that are not for me to be holding on to I'm not the predator it's not my shame it's not my guilt I'm gonna turn this pain into purpose and I am not going to feel bad for something that I didn't do that was never for me to feel bad for but what I am going to do is reclaim what's mine reclaim my voice reclaim my work understand who I am and yes although I'm, I don't view myself as a victim I'm a survivor but in that okay how can I use this not only to help myself but help other people hence why we're here so all I'm that to say is allow yourself to be angry because anger is an emotion it's a sacred emotion if we allow it to be but the only difference is I'll give yourself moments to be angry whether it's a day two whether it's an hour or however long honor it allow it to exist hold space for the anger because it's coming up for it to 
you be emptied out. Our emotions are energy in motion. We're supposed to be moving the energy. And so when we suppress it, it holds, it holds, it builds, it builds. And most of the time it stores in our body, it stores in maybe in our liver, it stores in our kidneys, it stores in our belly, in our back. So some of those pains that you're feeling are most likely associated to the trauma and the things that you're holding on. And I totally understand because it feels sometimes, and I used to think this, I'm like, by me holding on, it's justice, it's punishing them, it is not, I'm punishing myself. Because they're not even thinking about that. And if anything, they're winning in that sense, because I am still playing that record 20 times a day, and they're out there living their life, forgetting, forgetting what's happened, they're out there just merry and hilarious. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but all of that to say is honor your anger. Don't hold on to it. The ways that I honor my anger is I will write down a letter. So for the last sexual assault that I had, I wrote a very, I just pad paper, wrote out, just let my anger and I was effing and blinding, like let's add cuss them to hell and back did all of that because I needed to let that out. And oh my God, and I burnt the piece of paper, like burn them. And it's metaphorically those things that help in allowing you to move forward. Honor your anger, hold space for it, but don't hold on to it because holding on to it, it's not for you to hold on to. You don't deserve. You are deserving and worthy of letting that go. Forgive. Forgive not only yourself for holding on for so long, but forgive them. By forgiving yourself, you're forgiving them and cut them out in love. But that's something that can come on after a few years. Cause as I'm saying that, I know I'm like, my first few years, I was like, what? Like, love, like cuddle with love. So who love? Like, are you kidding me? But now when I'm in this place where I'm like, no, actually, because by sending out love, you get in return what you send out. So actually I'm really sending the love to myself. And also it means the energy around it is not so volatile. It's not so punishing to not only to myself. And so I just want to surround myself with love. I want to surround myself with what I've always wanted to feel and to be around and people to be around. And that's really what, if I could say anyone that's gone through anything similar, any sexual abuse, molestation, mental, physical, emotional, any type of abuse, in that way is honor yourself reclaim back whether it's your voice whether it's being seen seek that for yourself validate yourself hear yourself love yourself honor your energies emotions honor your energy honor your emotions anger joy laughter sorrow sadness honor all of it allow it to move through you quickest way to get to the other side is allowing those emotions to move through you and sometimes you might need support in doing so seek a therapist seek friends and family that you know can hold that space for you or speak seek both but it's really really important and my wish for you my intention for you my hope for you the energy I send wholeheartedly to you and for you is that you come the center of your life you let go of what's not yours for you to hold you let go of the shame of the guilt of the anger of the frustration and allow peace allow safety feel safe within your body because that's something that gets ripped out is your sense of safety you can create a safety now for yourself trumps all kind of safeties around so you deserve to be loved to be seen to be heard by you first and foremost you deserve to honor yourself you are so worthy you are so important you matter it wasn't fair what you went through but it doesn't have to rule and continue going on it doesn't have to continue you your life path because you deserve better than that you are so worthy and worth of so much better and that's my hope my wish my prayer for you And thank you for allowing me to share my story. So that's the basis of really what I dealt with when I was younger, what happened to me, what happened to me as recent as like last year and why my commitment to healing myself, my inner child, my inner children, because as life is going on, they keep popping up and really centering the relationship I have with myself, reclaiming my voice and helping and holding space for other people to do the same.